Aragorn, Geralt of Rivia, Deadpool, the Ghost Jinsekai, Malenia Blade of Mikella, that little green goblin dude from Star Wars, and that badass chick from Kill Bill. All legendary wielders of the blade, yet none hold a candle to the true master. Taking his first life at the tender age of 13, this ronin became a warrior of legend. So good was he with a blade, he's considered a kensei, a sword saint of Japan, which is a title very few have earned and only awarded to those who have mastered the way of the blade. Throughout his illustrious career, he bested more than 60 rivals in one versus one combat while also establishing himself as a philosopher, strategist and writer, penning the Book of Five Rings and Dokodo, the path of aloneness that is still read to this very day. But who was this samurai and how did he rise to greatness? Konnichiwa, Watasanone Meya Adam from Pantheon Mythology, and today we'll be travelling back to early Edo, Japan, and exploring the life of the greatest swordsman who ever wandered the earth, Miyamato Musashi. But first, tap that like button, and ready your blade, and prepare to strike by subscribing! 3, 2, 1, DRAW! Born in 1584 in Harima County during a period where the last battles of the samurai era took place, Musashi's father, Shinmen Munisai, was a skilled martial artist and swordsman himself, while his mother sadly passed shortly after his birth. Surrounded by warfare from a young age and raised by a father who was no stranger to the razor-sharp edges of a steel blade, it seemed Miyamoto was always destined to become an efficient killing machine. According to legend, he claimed his first victim during the very beginnings of his teenage years at 13, laying waste to a samurai named Arima Kihei. William Scott Wilson writes in his book The Lone Samurai, In 1596, Musashi was 13, and Arima Kihei, who was travelling to hone his art, posted a public challenge in Harafuku Mura. Musashi wrote his name on the challenge. A messenger came to Darren's temple, where Musashi was staying. To inform Musashi, his duel had been accepted by Kihei. Darren, Musashi's uncle, was shocked by this and tried to beg off the duel in Musashi's name, based on his nephew's age. Kihei was adamant the only way his honor could be cleared was if Musashi apologized to him when the duel was scheduled. So, when the time set for the duel arrived, Darren began apologizing for Musashi, who merely charged at Kihei with a six-foot quarterstaff, shouting and challenging to Kihei. Kihei attacked with a wakizashi, but Musashi threw Kihei on the floor, and while Kihei tried to get up, Musashi struck Arima between the eyes and then beat him to death. Arima was said to have been arrogant, overly eager to battle, and not a terribly talented swordsman. Clearly, I didn't have my priorities straight when I was 13. In 1599, obviously with notoriety on his mind, Musashi left his village to travel and sharpen his skills in combat, in a pilgrimage known in Japan as Musha Shugyo. There are conflicting reports as to the age at which he took this step, with the registry of the Sukushu region claiming him to be 15, whereas the Tanji Hokin Hiki, the book of his life, states he was 16. Regardless of which was correct, Musashi was just a child, ready to spread his wings. His deadly, sharp, steel wings. And he did just that, claiming his second life at the age of 16, defeating a samurai who challenged him known as Tadashima Akiyama. The following year, 1600, the Battle of Sekigahara took place, one that would define the destiny of Japan for the following 300 years, as it brought in the new era of the Shogun. Our hero was on the losing side of this battle, however he survived and continued his travels, eager to carve his name into the history books as the greatest of all time. In 1604, now a man at 21, Musashi found his way to Kyoto. It was here his fame would begin to spread across the lands as he defeated three members of the Yoshioka clan, respected teachers of four generations of the Ashikaga Shogun and founders of the Yoshioka style, one of the eight major sword styles of the Kenjutsu created around 1532 by Yoshioka Kenpo.
The first duel was against Yoshioko Sejuro, the head of the Yoshioko family and school, taking place outside the Rendai-ji temple in northern Kyoto. It was fought with a wooden sword called a Bokuto. This was to be a non-fatal duel, with the winner decided by the first to deal a blow. As a master of mind games, Musashi arrived late. In a rage, due to this apparent disrespect, Sejiro lost focus and in this moment of distraction, Musashi swung his Bukotu with significant force, shattering the left arm of his rival. Following the loss, Sejiro hung up his katana and became a monk, due to the embarrassment of losing to an apparent nobody at the time. Following the retirement of his brother, Denshichiro became head of the Yoshioka clan and swore revenge on Mushashi, considered to be an even better fighter than his brother. Denshichiro challenged the young warrior to a duel to restore honour to his family. Taking the if it's not broken don't fix it approach, Mushashi would once more arrive late and much like his defeated sibling, Denshichiro flew into a rage but unlike his brother, he took a book or two to the head which ended his life instantly. The prestigious Yoshioka clan were now humiliated and determined to put an end to the life of the one responsible. The new head, 12-year-old Yashioko Matashichiro, arranged a duel to be fought below the spreading pine tree on the slopes below the Ichijoji temple in the north of Kyoto. Mixing things up this time, Mushashi turned up early and hid, where he watched the youngster turn up, surrounded by followers of the clan armed to the teeth with swords, bows and matchlock guns. Unafraid, Mushashi went full ninja style, making his way through the ambush and in one swoop, cut the boy down putting an end to the Yoshioka school. Surrounded by enemies, he fought his way through the clan's disciples' dual-wielding katana in his right hand and the wakizashi in his left, slicing his way through to safety. This style, inspired by his father's teachings, would go down in legend, becoming known as Enmei Ryu, then later Nito Ryu, and Nitten Ichi style of swordsmanship. Miyamoto would describe his early experiences as a swordsman in his writings, The Book of the Five Rings, stating, I have trained in the way of strategy since my youth, and at the age of 13 I fought a duel for the first time. My opponent was called Arima Kehei, a sword adept of the Shinto Ryu, and I defeated him. At the age of 16 I defeated a powerful adept at the name of Tadashima Akayima, who came from Tajima province. At the age of 21, I went up to Kyoto and fought duels with several adepts of the sword of famous schools, but I never lost. Now an established A-lister, after bringing down the school of Yoshioka, many would seek Musashi and challenge him. Ha! <laughs> what fools, am I right? During this period of travel, notable victories included the Hozoyan Temple Warrior Monks, who were famous for their sojutsu, or yarijutsu, spear techniques, Musu Gonosuke, the founder of the Jojutsu staff techniques, Shishido Baiken, a kusarigama, a chainsickle weapon, specialist. However, it was in 1612 where a now 30-year-old Musashi would face his arch-nemesis, Sasaki Kojiro, and win what is now considered as his greatest and most famous victory. The two had agreed to meet on the Hour of the Dragon, around 8am, on the island of Ganryujima, where excited onlookers gathered to watch them battle. Never one to play fair though, Mushashi, as with the first two fights with the Yoshioka clan, was fashionably late. Running out of patience, Kojiro sent out his servants to find and bring Mushashi to the island, which they did, and during the journey, he would carve an oversized Bokuto from an oar with the intention of using it for the upcoming duel. Furious by the lack of respect and time management, Kojiro threw his sheath into the sea as a sign that it would now be a fight to the death. 
Circling one another, Kojiro leapt towards Musashi with his trademark overhead strike while Musashi too jumped forward, swinging his weapon with unbelievable force. The tale goes that as Kojiro slumped to the ground, dead, Musashi's headband fell away, sliced by Kojiro's near-fatal cut. Once again, Musashi had claimed victory and taken the life of yet another legendary warrior. Following this most famous of victories, Musashi felt he had now peaked and with little left to prove went seeking employment with the Owari Tokugawa clan, meeting and having bouts with Lord Tokugawa Yoshinao. From this, he established a dojo where he would teach his Enmei Ryu dual-bladed combat technique. As his previous life as a wandering ronin had come to an end, he would finally settle in Kumamoto Castle, working for the Hosokawa clan as a sword instructor. In 1643, suffering from suspected neuralgia or sciatica, retiring to Rigando, a cave outside of Kumamoto, he wrote The Book of Five Rings and Dokodo. At the age of 60, Musashi would lose his final duel, the duel of life, to thoracic cancer in 1645. And although he did not have any biological children, he adopted two, Mikinosuke and Iori, who would ensure his legend lived on. Bringing things back to the modern day, if you are ever lucky enough to visit Japan, you'll see that Musashi is still a celebrated figure, forever immortalized as perhaps the greatest swordsman to have lived. His books on the art of swordsmanship and the principles of life are still read to this day, which makes his influence all the more impressive, ensuring his teachings go on for eternity. If you're still with us, why not check out Miyamoto Musashi's backprint at Pantheon Apparel. Our clothing brand is inspired by myths and legends from around the world. Also, we ship worldwide and are rated excellent on Trustpilot. Whatever mythology, we've got you covered. We'll leave a link in the description below. So, what do you think of this legendary swordsman? Is he the goat, or do his dirty tactics and mind games take away from his greatness? Check out these videos on screen now to continue your binge. And most importantly of all, Mite korete arigato.